Hello and welcome to part two of my video series about the Nano Beacon Evaluation Kit from Inplay Technology. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the device um, and run a test case where you're running from the SRAM memory on the device and also how to burn a configuration into the device permanently. Um, so you have your, your Nano Beacon up and running. So what you'll need in order to do this uh, I'll show you right here. Um, you need the evaluation kit, as introduced before, which has the programmer device and the tag device. And you'll need a USB cable, uh, type A to micro. And with that, you're going to plug into um, a PC. And this end gets plugged into the programmer. Once it's plugged in, you should see the the red and green LED light up. And um, the other pieces you'll need are a device that's capable of scanning for Bluetooth beacons, or whether it's a phone, tablet, computer, you name it. We have a specific um, app designed on Android currently um, for that works nicely with our configuration tool, um, which I'll which I'll show you here. And you also need the configuration software, which I have navigated to on my computer here. So it's called Beacon Config. You can double click to run that. And it brings up this user interface um, from which you can easily set the configuration for the beacon. So before I zoom in on that, I'm just going to show uh, how it's important to orient all the chips uh, facing the same way. So on the, the programmer board and on the tag board, all the chips are on the same side. Um, so that's how you know that the six pin um, header is oriented the right way. So you just slide it on there. And so it's connected, ready to be configured. And I'm going to slide up my camera a little bit, hopefully, so you can see the so you can see the software user interface a little clearer. Um, so the key part here. Um, so the first thing we need to do is establish communication from the the PC and this interface to the to the programmer, and that's to this UR here. So I'll click on the detect button, and if you have multiple UARTs available, you can scroll through them with the mouse wheel here or on some buttons. Uh, currently, I just have one, uh, so it came up as COM4. The baud, leave it at 115200, um, and then just press the connect button here. And if it's connected, it'll gray out. Um, and only leave the close option. So that's used to actually close down the, the UART port. So now we'll move over to configuring the device. So in the top part of the UI, uh, we can set the transmission interval for periodic advertising. Um, you could have 1,000 milliseconds, uh, which is a second. Um, you know, 10,000 would be 10 seconds. I'm going to scale that back to a tenth of a second to get a little more uh, responsiveness from the device. I'll leave the phi layer at uh, one megabit per second. The transmit output power, um, I will use the, this is in uh, uh, dB milliwatts. I'll put it on the maximum level, um, which is two, it's actually two to three. Um, so I'll put that there. The address, I'm not gonna change. Um, it's, you know, you can change this as you desire, but I'm just gonna leave this as is. And then in terms of the payload, the payload is actually, a uh, key part it has to be formed correctly according to, um, well, if you want it to be detected by a Bluetooth reader, it has to conform to the, um, the Bluetooth structure, which we have documentation about. But what this basically says is um, that there's going to be um, 11 bytes of data coming. And this is nine bytes up to this point. And then after that, it's going to append a temperature byte and a battery 
uh, a battery voltage measurement byte. So I'm going to leave this as is and test it by pressing the RAM test button. So this is going to load this configuration into the RAM of the device and it's going to run run from the RAM as long as it's powered. So it's a, it's a convenient way to test that I have all the, the setup correct. So I hit RAM test. And now comes the reader part of the equation. So I will use this nano beacon application um, we have, I have on my phone. And one of the neat things that we've done here is in order to filter, so there's a, you can see there's a lot of devices um, that is you know picking, picking Bluetooth beacons or advertising data out of the environment. If I just want to uh, filter on on this particular device, I hit this this little dash button and it'll scan the QR code that's put up on the, the UI. And you can see hit stop hit scan and it's successfully filtered. And you can see the RSSI is toggling, you know, mid minus 50. And the advertising data is given raw there. And the battery voltage measured is 3.5 volts. The temperature is around 18C, which is about right for this room. So I know my configuration is, um, is functional. So after that's been established, I can actually burn that configuration into the device. In order to do that, so actually another note on the, the QR code, if, if you change the address, for example, um, let's say we wanted it to be 55 as the address, you have to hit the save button in order to update the QR code and then rescan. Um, so in that and, and yeah, and rescan in order to, to see that difference in the data. So let's see. I'm going to leave this as is, and I'm going to try to burn. So I press the burn button. We get a little status bar on the bottom as all the configuration is burned into the device. And it, it doesn't give uh, positive confirmation. It will only tell you if something has not gone right. So I take this as functioning. So I can, at this point, I'm done with the interface except for the, the, the code. I want to update the code on my phone. I'm going to filter because I changed that address. So I'm done with the the user interface part of it, I can separate the tag from the programmer gently turn the six pin connector off. And at this point, I can insert the a, a power source. In this case, the, the battery holder it comes with is a CR1220. So I will put that in the back. And you can see the correct orientation is the flat um, positive side to the outside. And so now we have a independent tag. And if I've done everything correctly, um, I should be able to um, scan on my phone for this device. And sure enough, scanning in the NanoBeacon app, you can see you can even see the, the address that was changed, um, 552233444AB66, and it's giving a, a battery reading of about 2.8 volts, which makes sense because my battery is, it's not a completely fresh battery, and the temperature is uh, 1819C, which is also, um, you know, makes sense with the office environment I'm in. So, and you can see the RSSI value. Uh, kind of changing if you move it really close to the phone you can see it goes up to minus 14 15 dBm Let's see and if I move it farther away you see the uh, the strength the received signal uh, decrease so 
that concludes my demonstration of actually how to configure the device and and um, write it into the one-time programmable memory. And in the next video, I'm going to do some, um, some more demo about the, the temperature sensing on this. Thank you.